Did you know that a sequel to Doom 64 was cancelled in the late 90s? Doom Absolution would have been a multiplayer-only follow-up to Midway's first take on the franchise, supposedly only featuring a two-player deathmatch mode as an attempt to compete with GoldenEye 64, which was incredibly popular at the time. The development team would go on to create Quake 64, and while nothing from Absolution has ever surfaced due to its short development time, the same fortunately can't be said about the franchise's other scrapped projects. A ton of Doom's cancelled content has been found in recent years, Eternal's cut pistol was usable at launch, a unique melee weapon could have replaced the Crucible, early 2019 Google Stadia footage of Mars Core was recovered, a movie based on the classic games was announced in the mid-90s, and 28-year-old gameplay of a cancelled Doom 64 Hell level surfaced online, but that's just the beginning. New content is surprisingly discovered on a semi-regular basis. Just last month, members of a community managed to dig up concept art from an unannounced id Software Alien Invasion game that was in development around the same time that Quake 5 was being considered. Although nothing was ever set in stone, John Carmack did state that they were tossing around the idea of creating another Lovecraftian Quake game throughout 2011, and the existence of Project Ranger on the Steam database suggests that it was in development at some point. We currently know about at least four of their cancelled projects from the late 2000s and early 2010s. There's the survival horror titled Darkness that would have shared Doom 3's major flaws, the untitled Alien Invasion game, a Lovecraftian Quake 5, and the infamous Doom 4, which we actually have new content for. It is very important to keep in mind that Doom 4 and Doom 2016 are two different things, although they are related. The original game's development started in 2007 and would last until 2011, when the project was rebooted after a major internal shift. At that point, the game went through various iterations until a solid concept was established in 2013, leading to the eventual launch of a final product in May of 2016. There's a plethora of content for both projects publicly available online. You may have seen these unused marketing images that have been floating around throughout the past few years or various test videos like this, all of which come from Doom 2016 and won't be mentioned going forwards. Doom 4's earliest unused materials actually predate the game itself, as a unique Doom project was pitched to id Software by a third party near the beginning of 2007. Crow Team, the developers behind the Serious Sam franchise, presented a Doom 4 project to id Software with the hopes of partnering up, but their pitch was ultimately rejected. Assets from Crow Team's presentation were eventually reused in Serious Sam 3, the most notable being the Mancubus as the Scrapjack, the Baron of Hell as the Noom, and a group of cybernetically enhanced soldiers. Ironically, some of Doom 4's actual designs are even more unique than the pitch, with the recently found Kako Demon being a great example. The franchise's most iconic demon was transformed into a huge, eyeless beast capable of shooting molten beams, making it the most powerful version of the Kaka we've ever seen. An original version of the Mancubus also showcases just how different the game would have been. It manages to make the creature feel deadly and brutish while still keeping the same overall feel from the previous games. Despite the surprisingly abstract take on the monsters, Doom 4 offered a more grounded version of the second game storyline, featuring armed resistance groups and survivors attempting to overcome the legions of hell. The protagonist would battle through a devastated New York set in the not-so-distant future, meeting new allies and facing intense threats along the way. Our first bit of newly found cancelled content comes in the form of this concept art, supposedly depicting some sort of industrial market location. This piece was found by Wad Overdose, who believes that this could relate to a leftover Chinatown location mentioned in Doom 2016's files, which isn't out of the ordinary considering how there is a real-life Chinatown in Manhattan. While this image is not directly labeled as Doom 4 artwork, it does contain a Mixom logo in the top left corner and the artist was listed as a part of its software's team, essentially confirming its relation to the project. The game's huge city setting would have complemented its combat system, allowing players to easily find cover during firefights. One of the more well-known facts about the cancelled Doom Project is that it had a heavy focus on story elements, cinematics, and realistic gameplay, leading some its software developers to nickname the project Call of Doom. The movement was slow and the gunplay featured reloading and aiming, similar to the first Rage game and the Call of Duty titles releasing around the time. Players needed to spend an extended period of time fighting possessed humans and progressing through the story-heavy campaign before getting into fights with actual demons, which is part of what led to the project being rebooted. While the designs of Hell on Earth elements ranging from flesh and bone to fire and brimstone are publicly available, content from Hell itself has yet to be found in any capacity, implying that this may have been the first game of a franchise to completely exclude missions set in the demon's homeworld. But, lucky for us, one version of Doom 4 seemingly had several locations that weren't themed around New York, and some of them were recently found. Interior and exterior shots of a space station model by Peter Respondic have been discovered, giving us a look at a unique location from a later version of the game. Concept art of a UAC space station was made by Matthew Burke at some point in development, possibly relating to the models. Another new location was briefly featured in the test footage that was released around April of last year, although we didn't get a good look at it. 
From what I can tell, it's an industrial sci-fi location, possibly a bunker, a UAC facility, or another space building. Another interesting source of cut content comes from Doom 4's soundtrack, which we actually don't know a whole lot about. Mick Gordon has publicly released four tracks that are believed to originate from a Cancel Games campaign, those being The Daughter, The Resistance, The Humans, and The Demons. The Doom 2016 multiplayer alpha also contained over 13 minutes worth of unused tracks that were created after the Doom 4 project was rebooted in 2011, although these were seemingly made by Chad Mossholder and not Mick Gordon. I'll leave a link to the full tracks in the description, where you can also find links and credits for all of the materials used in today's video. Iron Hub, Watt Overdose, and the other Doom 4 preservation enthusiasts have put a lot of effort into making this knowledge accessible to the community. Show some support by joining the effort to find more Doom 4 content, or just by looking into the project yourself. While Mick Gordon's unused Doom 4 tracks are pretty cool, what's even better is his recent discussion of Doom Eternal's main theme, where he breaks it down layer by layer. Doom Eternal updates and soundtrack news is just the beginning. Click on the video that's on screen now to find out so much more. Thank you all so much for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed it. That's pretty much all that I have for now though, until next time.